And I'm making this video actually to save you guys the hours of frustration I had to endure yesterday. Um, you know that video I made saying I was messing with trying to rebuild the selector switch? Well, right after I uh, got done making the video, uh, all the guts of the switch fell out. Now these are stationary, these are gonna be fine. As you can see, I looped them up a little bit to make them slide a little bit easier. But these are all um, normally closed sets of contacts. Now you would think that when you go to push the button in, that it would push and make a normally open contact to close it. But in all actuality, they're normally closed. So if you put this switch together incorrectly, you could be you could be running the compressor all the time, or, or the fan all the time, or the fan and compressor all the time, or worse, trying to run the fan on high and low at the same time, which would of course not be a good thing, and it will not be a fun time. Actually, nothing about rebuilding the switch was a fun time, but I figured I'd do. I figured I'd uh, risk uh, pulling my hair out again, trying to get these back in correctly. To show you the correct order in which they go in now because this could be a realistic situation because uh somebody else could get one of these weather wheels and the selector switch is messed up and these parts are not readily available you could probably get something online or you could just wire it in to work you know run all the time or, or figure something else out but I, I think we would all agree that it's more fun to use it the way uh the unit's designed to be used half the magic of these weather wheels are those nice six colored push buttons i think so anyway So, I choose to hold it in this orientation, which is the way it's going to be in when you go actually, you know, hook it up. That's a part number to the switch. I wonder if that's a 1959. I wonder if that's a date code. 1959. Could be. Anyway, it goes like this. And you're, uh, they, uh, this one does not have a part number, but the part number is going to face down. So you have this one right here, it's a flat guide piece. You have this piece right here, each one is different. Because the the, um, the buttons actually push down the angled part and it slides it and pushes that, or pushes that down. And that little knob there hits the contact to break the contact. I know, it's freaking dumb, I know. This is your second piece. They got these lubed up because these were bone dry and all dirty and you know just crappy looking. Now, I may have to take this apart again to just to verify that I have these in the right direction. There's a code for that one. Like I said, by sheer dumb luck, I had to, actually had to watch my own video. Praying that I got a good a good angle on it to see what order these went in, which thank God I did because I couldn't figure it the hell out for the life of me. I'm even not sure so much if the order is um, critical, as long as it's making a break into contacts at the right time. So as long as these notches are in the right place, it should, it may theoretically work. But I try to keep it, you know, the way it was supposed to. Now, as much as I want to say this is a garbage design, I mean I can't really say that because this is really the first fetters I've ever had that problem with. And these buttons seem, seem to be pretty, for the most part, pretty reliable. All right, so what we're gonna do is remember, orientation right up, it's off, high fan, low fan, high cool, low cool, ventilation. But this and these two buttons literally do the exact same thing. And they realize that later on, or maybe they just felt like, they didn't feel like spending the extra money no more. That's why, they, that's why the later ones have five push buttons. This vent and exhaust, that control is done on the freaking ventilation knob, not the freaking... <laughs> you would think that maybe the exhaust would run the fan in the opposite direction or something like that to suck air out, but it doesn't. In fact, I don't think that I don't think uh, reverse would actually work with a centrifugal blower. I think it has to be a blade for that, but that's a story for another day. If they want to do the exhaust feature right, they would have had the freak. They would have a mechanical damper, a uh, solenoid control damper that would open it up. And the blower wheel will just blow it directly out to the, you know, the outside part of the chassis. But, whatever. Alright, so, first, I have these 
in the order in which they're supposed to be in. I'm going to put them in one at a time. Oh, shit. I'm going to put them in one at a time. I'm trying to do this one handed sucks. Obviously, it don't matter what, side, what way the flat piece goes in. I want each one to be hitting the contact here. So that one obviously is lined up. It should hit the contact for the compressor, which it does. It's lined up perfectly right on it. This one right here is going to hit the contact. And like I said, part number facing down. It's going to hit the contact for a low, uh, high fan. See, that's sitting right. That notch is sitting right on. The contact force so when that switch energizes it's going to push down on it and open it up so it's actually going to be pushed down when it's not supposed to be in high fan that's freaking uh. there's some smart people out there man because i never would have thought of designing it like this they actually designed it harder than they had to this one here is going to be for low i'm going to slide that right down so that notch is laying it's actually pretty simple once you understand and break it down and understand exactly what they were trying to do here but this one here is actually not used for nothing. That's why it's uh, you know perfect in perfect shape. That was confusing me too because I was sitting there like pulling my hair out. Like where the hell is this switch supposed to freaking go? I don't know. Here it's just there to I guess to push the uh, other ones up when they're on or whatever. It's not used. You can see it kind of just sits down there in a spare spot where it would be used for like maybe one with like a heat pump or a three fan. Actually, you know what? Some of them do have three, uh, some of them are three speed models. I've never seen one, but I have like ads and brochures for them, so I know they do exist. I think usually they have heat pumps though. So it'll be, I think, I, I don't quote me, but I think the ones with the heat pumps have a uh, high, low, medium, heat, cool, off. So the heat and the cool are two, and then the three fan speeds and the off obviously picks them all up. You imagine that button malfunction was calling for uh, heat and cool at the same time with the reversing, energizing both ends of the reversing valve at the same time. That would probably not be a good thing. All right, anyway, and like I guess that would not be a good time at all. I'm going to start putting these back in. Now, these are a pain in the ass because these will pop out. These, but it's not a big deal. These slip them and put them back in. But yeah, if you have all these switches out and you try to read and you try to um, read these contacts, they're all gonna read closed. And that's what was screwing my that was what was screwing me up yesterday because I'm sitting there cursing myself like, the hell did I do wrong here? And here, there, all the contacts are just freaking normally closed. Dumb. But then again, how dumb can it be? It works. And like I said, before we put the cover on, we'll test it. I have it set the off right now. And like I said, I you had to pry this cover up. I mean, uh, Mike, uh, I messaged Mike and he told me that you're supposed to drill it. So I, I recommend drilling it instead of prying it because it is a little bit on the bent side. Um, but yeah, I would recommend uh, doing what he said and drilling it out. But I just ended up just digging into it before I even before he got a chance to reply. So. It is what it is. It's not. It's not broken. It's just a little bit. You know, it's not as nice as it would be if I would have thrown it out. But whatever. I mean, as long as the thing works, that's all I really care about. At the end of the day. This is so hard with one hand. Although it just seems to be working though. And no, I will not be using my bar as a workbench. I'm just doing it down here because last night I was getting attacked by freaking mosquitoes outside and I was getting pissed off. I'm like, screw that. All right. So we are off. So we're going to put this meter right here so you guys can see it. 
let's yeah there we go i'm gonna try to do this the best i can and i'm not sure how good it's gonna work right now right now i have the switch set to off so you know what i could do hang on one second i'm gonna go get a uh, clip quick All right, so as you can see, this is totally 100% ghetto, but <laughs> it w it should work. And nine, you know, I did believe this unit to be from 1960 because it doesn't have the BTUs written on a nameplate. So that tells me that it's older than the one in my bedroom. So no, this is the one from my bedroom. What the hell am I talking? What the hell crack am I smoking? Um, yeah, so this this switch might have been made in September of 1959 for the 1960 model year so i think i was pretty damn close on that 1960 okay all right anyway let's back to this so right now this push button is in the off position so i should have no continuity between the compressor should be off hang on let's get get a focus here compressor should be off which it is and neither fan speed high speed or low speed and high speed should have nothing. Okay, so we're gonna put it on a uh, high fan. So if my calculations are correct, the compressor will be off, which it is. Low speed should be off. And we should have roughly 0.2 ohms across the low or high speed contact because it's on high fan. And we do. 0.2 ohms, that's, a, that's a, for the guys who don't really know, that's a dead short, so that's good. That's exactly what you want. All right, we're going to put it on low fan, low fan, or low exhaust, I should say, but it's freaking fan because it doesn't really exhaust shit. The dampers and these things are useless pretty much. The compressor should still be reading off, and it is. Because I put this back together yesterday one time, and the compressor was on all the time unless you put the... Uh, Unless you put it in vent. All right. The uh, low fan, oh, the low speed should be made, which it is. That's still a, a dead sure. That's still a good enough uh, energy transfer right there. Good enough contact. And this should be open. And that's crucial. You really want to make sure that there's no continuity on both of your fan speeds at the same time. That could be catastrophic. If the um, if the compressor mal part malfunction is really not that big of a deal, because worst case scenario, the compressor is going to be running all the freaking time. I mean, it's a problem because it's not running the way it's supposed to, but it's not going to damage anything. Well, high cool. Okay, so your compressor should be on, obviously. And uh, okay, this is because this is before the thermostat. The switch goes to the switch to the thermostat, and then to the capacitor for the compressor. All right, so this should be made, and it is. We're on low yet. The high speed or low speed should not be made. I still get those confused every time, and the low speed should. And it is. That's good. Okay, we're going to try um, low cool, which is what I always run it on. So the compressor's on, good. The low winding should be made, which is that guy right there, and it is. Actually, has a better continuity on that, on the, uh, put that one in. And this one here should not be made because we're in low and not high so we're going to touch it we're going to put the lead on this one down here and we're open now these two switches literally do the exact damn thing kind of pointless but like i said i think we all agree that the six push buttons look better than a five so we're gonna i'm gonna go ahead and say it was for cosmetics so the compressor should be off because we're in vent not cool compressor's off the vent is always is always on high speed high, on the high leg Good, there's no continuity there. And this one here, you should have continuity because we're on high fan speed. And we do. And we're gonna let's turn that bitch off. And 
We should have nothing across anything. Good. All right. I can't believe that actually worked. Whoa. It's almost alcohol abuse. All right, now, um, this is always your power cord. Always. One end of your power cord goes here. One end goes here. Is this right here? I don't even have to meter it up, I, but I will just, just to show you. These here, these are all, you should have continuity between all these at all times because that actually doesn't go to the switch at all. This is nothing more than just like a, uh, trying to use it like chopsticks here. You're going to have pure full continuity across all four of these terminals at all times. No matter what one you're on. I'm trying to do it one handed, but just, you can, you can see that that's, that's all one big copper, you know, copper piece right there. So your uh, neutral line's gonna, or if your cord's gonna go here, or any of them, the order doesn't matter. Your compressor neutral's gonna go on one, and your fan motor's gonna, get, fan motor neutral's gonna go on one. And the other one, and one of these four is not gonna be used in this particular unit, um, or probably pretty much any of them, for that matter. This is this one here is your high speed. Your high leg on your fan goes to that. Your low winding goes to five. And your compressor, your compressor line goes to four. In case anyone ever has to take one of these apart. Like I said, I figured it'd be a good informative video for for everybody, you know, because I know everybody loves the weather wheels. Everybody. I don't I never don't really hear anybody saying they don't like the weather wheel units. And for good reason, they're the best. They're some of the some of the best units you can get. And it looks like this exact switch is used for 220 volt models as well. If we all know that freaking 220, just, 220 just doesn't use a neutral, so you're gonna have two hots. That's all it is. The only difference. And for all you kids that freaking hate on the 220 units, like that one up in New York, that 220 unit probably uses less electricity because it, because it, it draw 220 volts is gonna draw less amps. I mean, you really have to look at the data play to tell for sure, but it's a very safe bet that that, that, uh, 200, uh, that 220 volt, 10,000 BTU unit up on the Albany Craigslist right now as we speak, the only reason I'm not going to get that is because it's 220 bucks now, and it's four hours away. Now, it's worth a four-hour drive one way for me. I can load up, I can, I can bring one of the women with me that I talk to, and we'll just have a good-ass time on the way up. But like I said, 220 bucks, and people say that's expensive. To me, it's expensive because I already, because I already have, I already have some. Like I have a 14, I have a seven. Um, but it is worth every cent of that 200, that 220 bucks. Trust me, it is. If you do not have a weather wheel, and you're in somewhat of a reasonable distance, go get the damn thing. So I won't have to because I, because I will go get it. <laughs> I can't tell if it's a freaking heat pump model or not by looking at it though, because you can't really, he doesn't have a close up shot of the control panel. I'm going to assume it's probably not, but who the hell knows. It is sweet looking and I want it, so just keep that in mind if anyone's eyeing it up. I have my crosshairs on it too. So go get it before I do. 220 units are the shit, they're very powerful. And I don't know why you kids are so scared of them. Dude, every house in America has 220. That's the most common argument I get. Oh, I don't have 220. Well, yeah, actually you do because every service coming into a house in the United States is a 220 volt service. All the 110 volts is is, is you're only using one of the two one leg instead of both legs, and you have, and you're using a neutral instead of the other hot. That's all it is. That's a dumb down. There's a, theoretically more to it than that, but that's the Reader's Digest version. So yeah, somebody go get that freaking fetters. Or me, or KB will. Anyway, guys, hopefully this will be able to help somebody out someday with these switches in case anyone ever had to take one apart. I think it was one of my more informative videos, more so than anything. But, uh, yeah, that's all I got to say about that.